step back in time and witness the birth of cinema. From rare astronomical events to the bustling streets of the past, you won't want to miss the 10 oldest videos ever recorded in history. Number 10. A Trip Down Market Street, 1906 A Trip Down Market Street is an extraordinary film captured in 1906, just four days prior to the devastating San Francisco earthquake. This phantom ride film takes us on a cable car journey down Market Street in San Francisco, offering a fascinating glimpse into the daily life of an early 20th century American city. As the film begins at 8th Street, we are immediately immersed in a bustling cityscape. The streets are filled with a vibrant energy, showcasing the transportation systems, fashion trends, and architectural marvels of the time. People in their early 20th century attire can be seen going about their daily routines, interacting with one another, and boarding the cable cars. The cable car traverses eastward, revealing the ever-changing scenery of Market Street. We pass by various businesses, shops, and theaters, each providing a snapshot of the commercial and cultural landscape of the era. The architecture reflects the unique blend of styles that defined the city during this period. Little did the filmmakers, the Miles Brothers, know that their documentation of this vibrant city would become even more significant due to the impending earthquake. The devastating natural disaster that struck just four days later would forever change the face of San Francisco. The Miles Brothers studio was destroyed, but thankfully the films they had captured were sent to New York for safekeeping. In the aftermath of the earthquake, the Miles Brothers continued to film the city, capturing the post-earthquake scenes. Some of this additional footage, including a second trip down Market Street in its devastated state, resurfaced in 2016, allowing us to witness the stark contrast between the vibrant cityscape of 1906 and the aftermath of the tragic event. Number 9. Living Wigan, 1902 Step back in time to August 1902 as we explore the streets of Wigan through the lens of the short silent documentary film Living Wigan. Directed by James Kenyon and Sagar Mitchell, this film showcases the vibrant street life and a steam tram in the heart of Wigan Town Center. Premiering in Wigan Town Hall as part of the grand coronation celebrations of King Edward VII, Living Wigan provides an exciting visual experience for the audience of that time. The film formed a significant part of the two-hour film show, Live in Wigan, captivating viewers with its unique portrayal of the city's energy. As the film unfolds, we are immersed in the lively street scenes of Wigan. The filmmakers, known for their innovation and experimentation, injected a touch of comedy into the film's more formal opening event. They actively encouraged the audience to interact with the camera, resulting in playful and humorous moments. The crowd, somewhat unsure whether to respond to the camera or focus on the curious events around them, creates a dynamic atmosphere. One memorable scene captures a farcical moment where a man playfully splashes water at the crowds using a hosepipe. This comic interlude adds a sense of joy and levity to the film, showcasing the filmmaker's ability to capture both the everyday moments and the unexpected surprises of street life. Number 8. A Switchback Railway, 1898 In 1898, British filmmaker Robert W. Paul directed a short black-and-white silent film that captured the exhilarating experience of patriots riding on a switchback railway at a fairground in Alexandra Palace. The film's dynamic composition and engaging subject matter made it an instant success. As we watch the film, we are transported to the fairgrounds at Alexandra Palace, with Blandford Hall visible in the background. The switchback railway, an early form of roller coaster, takes center stage, offering a heart-pounding journey of twists and turns. The film showcases the excitement and anticipation on the faces of the riders as they embark on this thrilling adventure. Film historian Michael Brook of BFI Screen Online acknowledges the film's success, noting that it inspired other filmmakers such as James Williamson and the Riley Brothers to release their own switchback railway films shortly after. The popularity of these films speaks to the universal appeal of capturing the sensations of a roller coaster ride on film. 
While the filmmaker, R.W. Paul, might have missed an opportunity to place the camera inside one of the moving cars to simulate the ride from the passenger's perspective, it is understandable that such a technique would have presented challenges in keeping the camera steady during the fast-paced journey. Nevertheless, even from an external vantage point, the film successfully conveys the thrill and excitement of the switchback railway experience. A switchback railway remains a significant piece of cinematic history, showcasing the early experimentation and innovation in capturing the essence of amusement park rides. Its inclusion in the BFI DVD, R.W. Paul, The Collected Films, 1895-1908, to speaks to its enduring importance and its status as a valuable artifact of the time. Number 7. Lumiere Brothers Film Night, 1895-1900 In 1895, August and Louis Lumiere made history with the debut of their groundbreaking film, Workers Leaving the Lumiere Factory. This short film, widely regarded as the invention of movies for mass audiences, revolutionized the way people experienced visual storytelling. On March 22, 1895, the Lumiere brothers held a private screening of their film, marking a pivotal moment in the history of cinema. The audience consisted of only 10 individuals, unknowingly becoming part of an event that would shape the future of entertainment. Little did they know that they were witnessing the birth of a new medium that would captivate audiences worldwide. The Lumiere brothers, pioneers in the world of filmmaking, not only introduced cinematic technology, but also established the grammar of film. Workers leaving the Lumiere factory was shot in 35mm format, featuring an aspect ratio of 1.33 to 1, and projected at 16 frames per second. These technical aspects, innovative for the time, laid out the foundation for the cinematic language we know today. In the years that followed, the Lumiere brothers produced hundreds of films, showcasing their passion for capturing and preserving slices of life on celluloid. Their contributions extended beyond filmmaking. They invented the Cinematograph, a revolutionary motion picture camera that also served as a projector and printer. Developed in Lyon, France, this groundbreaking technology allowed multiple moviegoers to experience the magic of projected films simultaneously, marking a significant advancement in the cinematic experience. As we reflect on the Lumiere Brothers' filmography from 1895 to 1900, we witness the evolution of cinema itself. Number 6. A Trip Through Paris, France, 1890s are you ready for a mesmerizing journey through the streets of Paris over a century ago? Thanks to the dedicated efforts of film restorer Guy Jones, we can now experience the sights and sounds of late 19th century Paris in the beautiful footage collected from 1896 to 1900. This six-minute masterpiece takes us back to the enchanting Belle Epoque era in France. During the Belle Epoque, France flourished with advancements in art, culture, and technology. It was an age of beauty and progress, and one of the significant inventions of the time was the projected motion picture, patented by Auguste Marie Louis Nicolas and Louis Jean Lumiere in 1895. The Lumiere brothers harnessed this new technology to capture the essence of 19th century Paris resulting in priceless footage that we can still appreciate today. The film showcases various iconic locations in the French capital, such as the awe-inspiring Notre Dame Cathedral, the illustrious Champs-Élysées, and the iconic Eiffel Tower, which had only been standing for a decade at the time. Beyond the famous landmarks, the footage offers glimpses of everyday life in Paris during this golden age. We witness firefighters on horseback, valiantly rushing through the streets, and children joyfully playing with petit bateaux, little boats, in the picturesque Tuileries Garden. These fleeting moments capture the vibrant pulse of the city and allow us to connect with the people who inhabited it over a century ago. Number 5. Arrival of a Two-Stage Train in France, 1897 in this early film by the Lumiere brothers, a group of people eagerly stands in a straight line, awaiting the train's arrival. As the train approaches in the distance, the anticipation builds. 
According to popular legend, when this film was first shown, the audience allegedly fled in terror, fearing that they would be run over by the approaching train. While this legend has been identified as promotional embellishment, there is evidence to suggest that people were genuinely astounded by the capabilities of the Lumiere brothers' cinematography. It was on December 28, 1895, at Paris' Salon Indienne du Grand Café, that Auguste and Louis Lumiere forever transformed the world of entertainment. During their groundbreaking demonstration, they projected a series of moving images onto a screen, captivating the audience like never before. The Lumiere brothers' invention brought still images to life, immersing viewers in a whole new visual experience. While the concept of motion pictures was not entirely new to the audience, as Thomas Edison's kinetoscope had already gained popularity, the Lumiere brothers' ability to project moving images on a screen was unprecedented. On that day, ten short films, each lasting barely a minute, were shown, astounding the audience and paving the way for the future of cinema. The Lumiere brothers' invention proved to be an enormous success, inspiring them to continue making movies and expanding their catalog. One of their new films would go on to become the iconic image that symbolized this groundbreaking art form. Number 4. Olympics, 1896 The year was 1896, and in the ancient city of Athens, Greece, the first celebration of the modern Olympic Games took place. This momentous event, officially known as the Games of the Olympiad, spanned from April 6 to April 15, marking the revival of an ancient tradition. The idea of resurrecting the Olympics came from a visionary French baron named Pierre de Coubertin. Enthusiastic about breathing new life into the ancient games, which had been forgotten for approximately 1,500 years, the baron embarked on a mission to restore this iconic sporting event. The inaugural Olympics of the modern era showcased the athletic prowess of participants from 14 nations. Among the countries with the largest delegations were Greece, Germany, France, and Great Britain. Despite its humble beginnings, the Olympic Games would go on to grow into the international sporting festival we know today. The 1896 Games encompassed nine sports, each featuring a variety of disciplines. From athletics to cycling, fencing to gymnastics, sailing to shooting, swimming to tennis, and weightlifting to wrestling, the program offered a diverse range of competitions to captivate both athletes and spectators. The grand opening of the Games took place at the historic Panathenaic Stadium in Athens on April 6, 1896. This symbolic venue, which had been reconstructed to resemble its ancient form, served as a fitting backdrop for the rekindling of Olympic spirit. Over the course of the event, 241 male athletes from 14 nations would take center stage, showcasing their skills and competing for glory. As the closing ceremony marked the end of the 1896 Olympics, it was clear that a new era of international sporting camaraderie had been born. The success of the inaugural Games laid the foundation for the legacy and prestige that the Olympic Games continued to hold to the present day. Number 3. Lumiere Workers Leaving Factory, 1895 In the bustling streets of Paris on March 22, 1895, Louis Lumiere, an inventor and industrialist, presented a private demonstration of his groundbreaking motion picture system, alongside his brother August. The invention, known as the cinematography, would forever change the course of history. During this demonstration, a 17-meter strip of celluloid was projected, revealing a scene titled, Workers Leaving the Lumiere Factory in Lyon Montplaisir. Lasting approximately 50 seconds at a specific projection speed, the film depicted a mass of laborers, predominantly women, streaming out of the Lumiere facility during their lunch break. The audience at this private demonstration consisted of businessmen, researchers, and photography enthusiasts, setting them apart from the workers portrayed on the screen. Little did they know that this short film would become an iconic image and a significant milestone in the birth of cinema. Interestingly, the Lumiere brothers produced multiple versions of this film, with at least three known iterations. In the first two versions, the gates are already open at the start, and the workers swiftly pour out from the very first frame. 
However, due to the presence of a horse buggy that takes its time exiting the facility, the factory is not entirely emptied by the film's end. The third version, which premiered during the first commercial showing of the Lumiere Brothers film at the Grand Café on the Boulevard des Capucines in Paris on December 28, 1895, is considered the definitive rendition. In this version, the door opens only after the film has started, allowing the workers to exit in time before the door is almost closed. Number 2. The Round Hay Garden Scene, 1888 This remarkable short film was shot by French inventor Louis Le Prince in 1888, making it a groundbreaking piece of cinematic history. Filmed using a single-lens camera and Eastman's paper film at a speed of 12 frames per second, the film captures a fleeting moment in time, running for a mere 2.11 seconds. The Round Hay Garden scene was filmed on October 14, 1888 at Oakwood Grange, the home of Joseph and Sarah Whitley, located in Round Hay, Leeds, in the West Riding of Yorkshire, England. The film features Adolf Le Prince, Sarah Whitley, Joseph Whitley, and Harriet Hartley as they stroll around the garden. Notably, Sarah Whitley can be seen walking backward as she turns, and Joseph coattails fly as he also turns. Tragically, Sarah Whitley, Le Prince's mother-in-law and the mother of his wife, Elizabeth Whitley Le Prince, passed away just 10 days after the scene was filmed. However, the story of Louis Le Prince takes a mysterious turn. On September 16, 1890, he vanished under perplexing circumstances from a train. Despite extensive searches, his body and luggage were never found. Over a century later, a photograph of a drowned man was discovered in a police archive, raising speculation that it could be Le Prince. Shortly after his disappearance, Thomas Edison attempted to take credit for the invention of cinematography, igniting a battle over the recognition of the true pioneer. Le Prince's widow and son, Adolf, were determined to defend his legacy as the inventor of cinematography. In 1898, Adolf appeared as a witness in a court case initiated by Edison against the American Mutoscope Company, claiming sole inventorship of cinematography and demanding royalties. Unfortunately, Adolf was not permitted to present two cameras as evidence to establish Le Prince's prior claim. Ultimately, the court initially ruled in favor of Edison, but this decision was overturned a year later. Number 1. Passage de Venus, 1874 In 1874, the observation of the transit of Venus captured the attention of scientists around the world. Numerous expeditions were organized, with at least 62 parties visiting 80 locations in search of the best viewing points. To ensure accurate and permanent records of this celestial event, scientists sought innovative techniques. It was during this time that French inventor Janssen conceived the idea of a revolver photographic camera system. Janssen's enormous camera, reminiscent of the later development of movie cameras, utilized a Maltese cross-type mechanism. This revolutionary apparatus could capture multiple exposures at regulated intervals on a daguerreotype disc. Janssen even speculated that his invention could potentially be used to study animal movements once photographic material is advanced enough to allow for the required brief exposures. However, there is a significant caveat to this historical achievement. The footage we have today is not the actual transit of Venus, but rather a screen test. The models in the film served as placeholders to test the plates that would be used for the real event. Sadly, the original footage of the Venusian transit may have been lost forever. Existing material from 1874 consists solely of practice plates shot with models, as subsequent research in 2005 indicated. Nevertheless, we must appreciate this film for what it is, a significant milestone. It symbolizes mankind's first steps into the realm of film a medium that would later exert profound cultural influence and become a powerful art form. These early attempts, though humble, laid the groundwork for the remarkable achievements that were yet to come. It is awe-inspiring to consider the vast potential that lay within this technology. To document astronomical and scientific phenomena, revolutionize the preservation of once-in-a-lifetime events, and even simulate and replay life itself. 
We hope you enjoyed this journey through the oldest videos ever recorded in history. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on our upcoming content.